Uh, there's been a lot of questions that have been emailed um, to me or put actually on the website itself. Um, I've been ticking them off as we've gone through them tonight. Um, Dave from Fast has gone through them all with me, so you know, we're, we're agreed on what areas are covered. So I'm not going to repeat the questions that have been covered tonight. I'm just going to touch on the ones that obviously haven't been. Got a question here from somebody who goes under the name of Fingers McKenzie on the website. And it's to Gary. What tactics were employed to keep Hayes and Yedding in the conference? And will they be applied, applied to our way of playing? Obviously, it's pretty impressive to keep them there in such circumstances. Um, the tactics we played at um, Hayes and Yedding were that we, we tried to pass the ball. The criteria for signing players was could they pass the ball, could they receive the ball. Um, we tended to play our way out of, out of trouble whenever we got into it. We um, looked to play out from the back. Had a very talented centre half that we signed from Wickham that was um, very comfortable on the ball. Um, played the ball and kept the ball, kept possession very well, um, and sometimes made mistakes at the back that cost us. Um, Scored an awful lot of goals and created lots and lots of chances, but unfortunately we struggled to find defenders who could fit into that pattern of play and also defend well. So we tended to concede a lot of goals as well. And um, had some spectacular results um, and then also had some spectacularly bad results. Um, I think the April defeat from uh, away to Luton was um, one of the springs to mind where after 33 minutes we were 7 0 down. Um, what Richard Murray said to me after the game was that he couldn't believe that we were the better side in the second half. Um, we played much better than um, So, basically, we, we tried to keep possession of the ball, um, create chances, and defend well. Um, and it was, it was good to watch. Um, and obviously, it worked, it, it worked at that level. Um, but unfortunately, because of financial restrictions, we couldn't get the players that um, could do both defending and attacking. And I felt that until that happened, um, you know, needed a budget increase and not cut. Until that happened, we were never going to be able to compete. Um, we'll be happy. Yeah, that, that's the way we play. I was a centre forward, I scored an awful lot of goals. Um, very often from inside the six yard box. In fact, I think in 1998, I played here for a Greek team. Um, lost the game and scored. Um, I like to get the ball wide, get into the box, um, and score goals. That's been, always been my way of playing. Gareth, even though he was a defender, was a very attacking defender. Um, we're very attack minded. Um, he's just trying to get the balance right um, between attacking and defending. But we keep similar to the question the gentleman asked there. Um, that's the way we play. We look to keep possession and dominate possession and keep the ball. Okay, we've got another one from the same person here. Hopefully, this isn't going to happen. But if it comes to the business end of the season and we're fighting the drop, will the plan change and you'll bring in part time old heads to get us out of the brown stuff? No, basically. Um, trying to mix part-time and full-time doesn't work. Um, we tried a couple of players last year and it just didn't work. Um, we didn't get enough out of those players, so not going to be full-time players. Um, but believe me, there will be an awful lot of full-time players available um, at any, any given stage. Um, there's always teams looking to loan out their, um, their players. So if we are at a critical point of the season, and I would suggest it, I would hope it would be at the right end of the table, then I'll certainly be talking to Simon and suggesting that we might spend a little bit of money to get, um, get some more quality. Okay, here's one for Paul as well as uh, Gary and Gareth. It's from someone called Fair Play. With the emphasis on youth players in our younger squad this season, why have three promising youngsters just signed first team deals locally at step four? And what's been done to ensure more youngsters stay at Farnborough? There are a number of players that um, we wanted to keep at the football club. Um, at the end of the season, conversations um, that I had with Simon, some of the young lads that I'd taken over to Fleet. Um, now, I think in the past, um, you know, there have been problems with young players being given opportunities to, to break through into the, the first team setup um, that were clearly good enough. Um, and from my benefit at Fleet, I was able to have you know the benefit of those players, and you know they did very well for me. Um, you know at such a young age, um, I had no problems with throwing 16, 17, 18 year olds into the team at Fleet. Um, 
but I feel that maybe their heads got turned, you know, to opportunities to stay at that level um, with the sort of uncertainty of what was maybe happening down here at Farnborough. Uh, and they've got themselves fixed up on contracts for next season, which is totally down to them. That's their, that's their prerogative. Um, I was trying to install you know, um, you know, my beliefs that Farmer was where they should be. Should be. Um, the opportunity would come for them. But if they want to go down a different route, then that, that's absolutely fine and wish them all the best. But you know, we want players that want to be here. And that's young players as well as, as senior players. Um, you know, I think that that's an important part of playing football these days. You've got to be happy, you know, but you've got to want to be where you're playing football. You've got to want to play for the club. And you know, there are a number of youngsters here within the setup that I've seen already, um, that I've worked with in the in a couple of end of season games that we've had here. And you know, those lads have indicated to me that they want to be here and they want to learn and they want to progress. So, you know, it's a two way thing. You know, if, if players want to be here, we want them here, then that's great. If they don't you know, and, and at the same time, we will also say to players, look, you're struggling with the levels that we're expecting. You know, it may be better for you to go and have a look at a, a league or two below um, and um, and try and work your way back up again. You know, but that, that's how it works, you know. For the most modern day footballers, you know, you have to deal with getting released and you also have to pick yourself up and go again and try and get back to where you want to be. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm all for it. You know, youngsters that want to that want to be here, we'll work with them. Okay, one for Gareth that we've got here. Um, obviously, you've got a lot of contacts in the pro game from your time. Um, how are you sort of utilising those within the non-league circle? It's very difficult to, uh, you know, to. I was lucky enough to play at a really high level with Chelsea and Sunderland. Um, taking young pros out of clubs like Chelsea, you know, down to this level is very difficult. You've got to be very careful because they play a different type, type of football in the academies. It's very technical and it's, it's, we're looking for a type of player that can handle themselves physically as well. And, you know, contacts, not just at, at Chelsea, but obviously through the leagues. Yes, yeah, so, I'll, you know, we'll utilise and uh, as we have done over the last four years and we'll get good, good young players in, as I said before, and as Paul's just said there, who want to be here and, I want to progress. Okay, there's one that's um, geared at myself here. Um, it's from Matt Workman. There's obviously a lot going on behind the scenes, and in this day of modern technology, i.e. websites, Twitter and Facebook, people seem to want instant updates and everything compared to the days of waiting on the news in the paper. So will the club be more forthcoming on providing website updates on a quicker basis so the fans don't find out second after things that are leaked onto other websites and forums? I've been talking to a few of the guys during the break about this. Um, obviously, the website is a massive area for us to develop here. Um, we're currently, one of the first things that I wanted to do here was build up a good, strong media team that we've got within the club. These two guys who are here tonight, um, Gary's brought them along with him. They are from Hazen Yeti. Um, they're going to be offering a service for us next season so that every game there will be highlights from both home and away that will be on the website within 24 hours. There will also be interviews with Gary um, and people around the club that will be on the website within an hour of the game. We're going to try and get highlights up in the bar after the game within in the club, um, we're just going to be massively driving forward this media side of things because you know we don't necessarily just want people supporting supporting Farnborough who are at the games. We want them, you know, watching worldwide. Sounds a very ambitious statement, but why not be ambitious? You know, we know we've got shirts that we were sending across to a lot of different countries last year, and uh, you know we want to make sure that they can see the highlights and see the progression that this club's going. So there's going to be two websites that we're going to be having. There's one for the football club, and there's one for the facilities and the corporate side of things, because we feel the need to diversify those two. So realise that some people just want to focus on the football, not really give a monkeys about the other side of things. And also I always look at it that we have got fantastic facilities here, but really does the world's worst mother-in-law want a daughter to have a wedding at a football club? You know, if that's what she's seeing straight away. So we've got to look at both sides of things. Um, basically, keep you guys updated with everything that's going on in the club. 
both on the field and off the field. Hopefully this afternoon putting the uh, accounts on the website is something that you can see. We've got nothing to hide. We're up for questioning. Um, we want to basically develop something whereby every week through the website there's going to be a weekly online web chat so people can come on and ask the questions there and then that they want to ask and someone will be on the other side and they'll be answering it. Um, we've got to be ambitious, we've got to be forward thinking, we've got to spread the word about this football club around the whole area, the whole region and as I say, you know, these guys tonight doing what they're doing will be highlights of the um, forum that will be online tomorrow, well, I think it's Monday that it will be online, I don't know, it's exactly. Um And really, I'm trying to be as open as I can. Anything that you want us to try and do, we'll try and do it for you. So, um, you know, there's nothing to hide. That's where we are. So hopefully that's covered that side of things. Um, got one more question that we've got on here. This is from someone called Peter Grant. Are you able to give a cast iron guarantee that we'll do the league double over Woking? <laughs> No, basically. Um, I would like to think that we'll finish higher than in the league. Um, my, I've always felt that the league table is the best indicator of how good a team you are. And if you, if we lose, I would take two 10-0 defeats to walk in to, um, if that would guarantee, if that would guarantee us winning the league. Um, it, I would take that as a trade-off because the league position is everything. Um, so. I'll, I know it might not be the politically correct thing to say, but um, I want to finish as high as we can in the league. And if we're finishing top, I don't care who we have to be or who we have to lose to get there. Um, I want to finish top of the league. We've got some more questions from the floor. Hi guys, welcome to all. I think everything you said so far is quite encouraging. Um, I just wanted to know, with the squad and the way the youth is going to work, does that mean things like the Hampshire Cup, that we are actually going to be looking at youth team players coming through um, because previous managers have always said this, and I know we've got the structure here, but it hasn't actually come to fruition. So is that something we can really look forward to on perhaps the competitions that we wouldn't necessarily be focused on, such as the league, that we can see these new jungle players coming through? About three minutes ago, I had exactly that conversation with Paul Hartness. Um, at our previous club, there was an insistence that we tried to win the uh, Middlesex Senior Cup and whatever small, smaller trophy that we were involved in which I found a little bit disappointing because I was too concerned with the league position. Um, we just had a, um, a conversation with Paul. Um, I didn't realise there was an older shot senior cup as well, um, which now I do. Um, I think the probably the older shot senior cup definitely um, it will be given over to, um, to Paul to, to say, okay, it's now your game and use that as probably the um, sort of Premier League team. Um, as for the Hampshire cup, I would suggest it, it depends on when the game is. Um, if the game is on a Tuesday night and we've we just had a, a tough program of three or four midweek games, then I would suggest yes, the players could probably do without having that game as the, the first two. But we'll take it, take it on board and, and look at it like that. Last season for the Middlesex Senior Cup, I played the reserves um, in every game. We got to the final and I played exactly the same team and was then criticised for not bringing in the first team, which I felt wasn't the right thing to do. The players that have got us there, they had the chance to play in the final. Um, we ended up losing the final. Um, like I said, I got criticised for that, which I thought was a little bit unfair because it was unfair to the players that have got us there to play in it. So, uh, as I said, I'm, I'm not too worried about the, the Hampshire Senior Cup and the, the, the Aldershot Senior Cup. I don't think the chairman will say, if you don't win those, you get sacked. Um, it's the league position that's the most important. Well, yeah, even partial, no. This club has had a couple of very good runs in the FA Cup, which does generate a lot of money. Is that important to you as well, that we can possibly go for a good run in the FA Cup and FA Trophy? I would like to think so. Um, the problem with the FA Cup and the FA Trophy is you can't control who you who you draw. Um, again, I, got, I can only talk about my previous experience. I remember getting knocked out by Aldershot the year they won it um, for the the FA Trophy and again being criticised for losing that game when at the time they were the best one league team in the country. It's, it's difficult when you can't control who you're playing against. I would I would like to think we would have a good run, but again I, I firmly believe that well my view is that I would I would take out I would take a first round exit in, in both competitions if you could guarantee me that we'll get promoted at the end of the season. 
Um, to me, the leaf position is everything. Um, but having said that, if you go and see other games in front of you, you try and win it. Um, so, but not being able to tell you who we're playing against is um, it's difficult to suggest whether we're good or not. So I certainly won't make any predictions on my score.